Jim, the Spirit of the Lord says this to you. He says, my son, you have been faithful with little. My son, you have been faithful with little. Oh, for this is the year of increase for you. Oh, but it shall not come at the end of the year, nor even the middle of the year. But I tell you, my child, because of your faithfulness, you have attracted my attention as Cornelius has. For in the midst of your suffering, in the midst of it all, you have been faithful. Well, to me, saith the Lord, and I shall bring an increase out of you. I shall bring an increase out of you, not just in finances, but in resources and influence and environment and platform. Oh, but most of all, in a fresh realm of authority through the anointing, saith the Lord. Oh, for I am the Lord God, and I am faithful, saith the Lord. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Do not fret. Do not question. Do not fret. Do not wonder. For you have snapped out of it for a moment. Said, what's going on? But then you come back immediately. Oh, for your desire. Your heart is pure and it desires to live in the highway of holiness. Say it, Lord. Thank you, my son. Thank you, my son. Woo. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Wow. It's his waves and bill. Whoa. 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 We thank you for what you're doing here. Amen. 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 Wow. Good morning, everybody. Woo! Woo! You know that word that was released for Jim, you can have it too. Good job. He didn't hesitate. <laughs> Anybody ever been there? Where you even had prophetic words spoken over you? Even a similar word three and four times. And then the fifth time it comes, you're like, Lord, I'll trade in all those words for the money, man. I mean, keep them, man. No, but I'm telling you, there's warfare going on, man. There's warfare going on. But he's, he's faithful, man. He's faithful. And when we're faithful, like he just spoke over Jim, when we're faithful, it brings an expediation. It brings an increase. It brings... It just brings that, uh, into the now, man. Because... Now that it's been spoken to you, that through grace, your faith can get it to combust within you, man. Amen? Amen. Amen, Amen man. You know, Steve, when you were talking about the fire, the combustion, the fire, the Lord just spoke to me and said, the fire that he starts, no man can put out. He says, Amen. this ministry was named for a purpose. He said, you are that purpose. He said, you are that fire. So... You've got to keep it stoked up. You've got to keep faithful for what God has started. No one can put out. Not Whoa. Even you can put it out. Whoa. But the Lord says, you are that consuming fire. You are my consuming fire. Ooh. Now it's time. It's time. Yes. Whoa. Whoa. He said, you are the burning one. He said, you are my burning ones. Yes. You are my burning ones. Get this in your spirit. You are 
my burning ones. I've called you to be my burning ones. about the size of the church, it's the size of your heart, it's the size of your spirit, saith the Lord. Says, if it was just one, I would send him. If it was two, look, <laughs> right here, there's enough people here to take the city. Yes. Wow. Have the faith to believe it. But you're the burning ones. You Whoa. are the wildfire. Yes. Yes, we are. Thank you, Lord. Wow. The atmosphere is charged, man. It's charged. Wow. Thank you. And Jen's pumped up back there teaching the kids, man. Hey, that class. Wow. 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 I want to welcome everybody online. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here with us. Everybody here in house online. I want you to like this and share this, man. Be that seed sower, man. You know, I love when the Lord starts putting things together, man, you know. When Jim was just prophesying, that's kind of what we're gearing everything up to, man. Getting people of one mind, one heart, one spirit yeah. to take a city. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To take a city, man, you know. And, you know, that's not the vision of most houses, it's really not. It's really not the vision of most houses, you know. And it's funny, the Lord was reminding me, you know, how we got the name for this ministry. Hey, hey Martha. <laughs> you know, I remember we just did a meeting, me, Jim, V, Letty. And I was driving back, and the Lord spoke to me about Jim being a wildfire that's a blazing man, you know. He just reminded me of that. And wildfires that are blazing, they're contagious. They're catchy, man, you know. They're catchy. Yes. And the enemy's always trying to stop that wildfire. Man. He's trying to tame you. You know, what is love without passion? That's the passion, man. That's the passion he has for you. It can't be stopped, man. It can't be stopped. Hip-hop, it don't stop. It can't be stopped, man. Unless we do it. But we really can't even do it. All we can do is try to hold it down. Because I promise you go back to the world, start party, you'll never get high the same. Yeah. Yeah. You start sleeping around, man, it ain't going to be as good. Nope. I promise you, man. Once you encounter him and start to burn for him, nothing is ever the same. I went to church for many years, but I never encountered him. I never burned for him. And that was a shame on my part, man. Because I didn't pay the price on a daily basis. You know, before I came in to ministry, I was a businessman. I was successful, man. I had five locations. Successful by the world standard. Because I'm a hustler. I move, man. I move. I move. You know? And 
I remember when the Lord told me, you got to shut them down. I was like, but Lord, I'm finally doing something. And we, we did sales, man, you know. I said, I'm finally doing something right and making good money at it legally because I've been doing illegal sales for most of my life. But I was excited that it was legal, you know. I was excited about it. And the Lord says, said this to me. He says, even if you're winning the rat race, you're still a rat if you're in it, man. <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, wow. I think my wife said that's why I like cheese so much. No, man. <laughs> But I'm, I'm just saying, sometimes we're running the wrong race. Some of times we're in pursuit of the wrong stuff, man. And we don't develop the disciplines and the structures and the daily habits to let God transform us. I came to church for years and there was no transformation. Now, I live in a place of brokenness, man, you know? I live broken, man. You know, it's that purity of grace, just being with him. Yeah, yeah. It's just about being with him. Come on. You got to start somewhere. Amen. Maybe you screwed up a hundred times. That's cool. Today's 101 time. That's cool. Yeah, but brother, I'm still doing this. Uh, you know, me and brother Alex were talking about that last night. I'm still doing that, you know. That's religion, man. Come as you are. Amen. I'll tell you, I've never saw the judgment of God bring people to repentance. Whoa. But I've sure seen his goodness to it, man. Oh. It's the goodness of God that... Brings people to repentance where there's going to be a desire to seek him and to be with him. Man. <clears throat> I've been doing this a minute, you know. Not so called the pastoring part, you know. <laughs> but I've been doing living for the Lord for a minute. And Tuesday morning, I'm sitting there. And I'm like, man, God, we got us fast in three months, man, this year. It's a long time. I'm thinking about it, you know. And we're, we're fasting the first week, starting that Monday of every month this year for a week. It's three months, 12 weeks. And, and I'm just thinking about it. And all of a sudden, I get the worship music on the YouTube, on the TV, you know. And boom, I get snatched up. And I'm in the throne, and everybody's bowed down. Angels are there. Saints are there. Crying out to God, worshiping him. And this thought pops in my head. Why do we want to do this? You know, I'm not real smart sometimes, man. Praise God for his mercy, man, you know. But I thought that to myself. Why do we want to do this? Forever? And before I could say, it's like the Lord heard my thought. And I was like in the back. I wasn't like right in front of the throne. I was, there was thousands of people in front of me and angels. And he says, oh, that's easy, son. It's because of my majesty. I'm like, your majesty. He goes, yeah, you think you know what my majesty is, but you don't. I was like, wow. I, said, well, I was about to ask him, but, you know, God answered me before I could even ask him, you know. And he goes, my majesty is my stateliness. It's the character of who I am. That lights up a room. It's like somebody that walks into a room and lights it up. He goes, 
And all my children carry it. But because they don't believe it, they don't light up the room. He goes, fix it. And I'm like, man, we overthink things is what we do, man. We overthink things because we let life start speaking louder than truth. We let situation and circumstance start mattering more than what matters most, man. I don't care how long you've been saved and how strong you are, man. It starts to edge at you, edge at you, edge at you. That's why the only answer is being with him. Being with him. But you don't have desire to be with him. Unless you get yourself positioned around some crazy people, man. Unless you quit taking ungodly counsel. Blessed is the person who does not take counsel from the ungodly, man. You know? Some of us are going through something. We're asking somebody for advice that don't even know Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. When I got high, I promise you, I wasn't asking the dope man for advice, man. <laughs> but that's what it's like. Oh, the bartender will fix all your, you know, that old adage, man. You know. But we, from that place of not knowing him, we make bad choices. Man. And he told me, we all carry his majesty, man. It's his stateliness. It's his character. And he says, and you can't know my glory without knowing my majesty. And of course, I thought I knew his glory. I was going to ask him, well, what? Before I could ask him again, he said, my glory is my extravagant beauty. It's my extravagant beauty on a person, on a situation, on a place, man. He says, that's why men and women cannot see the creative value of others, and they only perceive them and judge them from a place of face value of who they are today and what they're doing today. They can't look past it, man, because we don't know his majesty, so we can't see his glory on that person. So we can't go lower and say, forgive them, Lord. They don't know what they do because they don't know who they are. But I do. Instead, we want to point the finger. Instead, we want to talk crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Instead, we want to judge them. Mm -hmm. When if we're with him, we'll become like him. We'll, <clears throat> we'll love them through it. Yeah. You who are spiritual, with gentleness, pick up the one that has fallen. Mm -hmm. Lest you fall yourself. Isn't that what the scripture says? Yeah. So and so ain't acting the way I want them to act. We put expectation on people. My wife don't owe me nothing. If she never cooked another meal for me, yeah, I'd probably go hungry some days, man. But, but she don't owe me a thing, man. But I owe her everything to love her. That's what the scripture says. Nobody owes you nothing. But we live in a place of putting expectation on our children, on our spouses, man, on this and that, man. Get in a secret place. Who do I hire? Whoa. Where's the money coming from? He'll show you. Just be with him. Get yourself around godly people, man. Get yourself around godly people. I promised you, man, when I was partying and ripping and riding and doing that, I was not hanging with one, not even one Christian. Now you see the church today, they look like the world, they act like the world, they do like the world, and they're all hanging together, man. 
So what are you going to do? Judge them? Or help them? Or help them? Because I was that one that confessed Christ and went out and partied, man. Not once, not twice, but 29 times. I was that one that was mean and judgmental. I was that one because everybody's process is different, man. God could have made the world like that. But he said, let me show men that I'm a God of process. We're going to do it in seven days, man. But we say things like this. I don't know how much more I could take. If you do it one more time, and then you got the enemy like, yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you should cut people off. The Holy Spirit tells you. Because some people, there's a lot of toxic relationships jumping off, man. You know? Jesus cut off his family for a while, man. You know? They tried to come watch him preach at the end of Luke 2. Jesus said, whoa! Don't let my mother, brothers, and sisters in here. And then he even said, why? He said, because they do not do the will of my father. Those who do the will of my father are my mother, my brothers, and my sisters. Man. But Jesus didn't give up on them. He didn't lose hope. He didn't mistreat them. He interceded for them. And two of his brothers became apostles. One of them, the head of them all. James. But see, when we're immature... And we're led by feelings, thoughts, and emotions. What we do is we want everything now. We want everything now. So-and-so better change it now. I need more money now. Well, sow some money. You'll get money, man. It's a spiritual law. I'm always arguing with my husband. Well, shut your mouth. I can't stand Billy at work. Buy Billy breakfast tacos. I need to do something different, man. Instead of living in dysfunction, man. Do something. See, so you got to understand. We are clay. We are clay. If you think you're in control of your life, you are a you are a moron, man. You are a moron. You are so deceived, man. How could clay be in control of your life? Clay is a thing that the potter God molds, man. You know, Luke 8 talks about it too. Soil. We're soil, man. What kind of soil are you? <clears throat> Talks about four types of soil. Three out of the four were bad. The only solution is being with him. There's no other solution. And positioning yourself around people who are hungry. I'm telling you, when I sit there alone and I start thinking, I start, whoa. I get myself in trouble, man. You are not created to do it on your own. You're created to walk with him. Hebrews 10 talks about, do not forsake the assembly of the gathering. Why? Because when you come together, you get stirred in love and good works. But we sure can justify some of the choices we make for missing the assembly of the gathering on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. We sure can, can't we? Yeah, come on. Yeah. 
But I promise every one of them is a lie. And it comes from the realm of feelings. Comes from the realm of fear. I'm sick. Get to church. Get prayer. Abby was dying the other day. She got to church. She got better. You know, we just get these because we're so worldly. We're so carnal. We're so fleshly. We're so touchy feely. I promise you, if you're touchy feely, the enemy is going to touch you. If you can be touched, you're going to get touched. How come when you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice? But when you squeeze most Christians, you don't get Jesus all over you, man. I'm just saying. When pressure comes on us, we act worse than the world. That's why they're not trying to break down the fences. They ain't busting down the doors. We are the clay, man. Isaiah 60. Arise and shine, for your light has come. It's not coming. It's come. It's here. It's in you. Amen. <clears throat> darkness is going to cover the earth. Great darkness to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. But he didn't ask you to shine, but he commanded you to shine yeah. in the midst of the darkness, man. Yeah. And he says, when you're shining, I'm going to draw men unto you. Because they shall see my glory upon you. And you will represent who I am, my nature, my character, my likeness with precision and accuracy. Man. We're so busy trying to pay the electric bill. I, I, you got to pay the bills. Don't get me wrong. <clears throat> but when you don't make it your priority. The bills will get paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need more money. What's the Bible say about it? I need more peace. What's the Bible say about it? I need more joy. What's the Bible say about it? Instead of asking old Hector at work, does you see looking at porn every chance he gets on break? But Hector drives a Cadillac. He's always got a lot of bills. That's how we judge things. Yeah. That's how we judge things. Yeah. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 6, 10. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, Father. Yeah. Jesus didn't say my will be done. He didn't say Peter's will be done. He didn't say, man, John's going through it. Let his will be done today, Father. <laughs> See, God's primary focus is his will being done through your life and as a body. Yeah. Yeah. If you read the scripture, you will never fulfill your destiny if you are not yielded to the vision of a house. It's right there. It's right there. I used to watch the Lone Ranger when I was growing up. I'm that old, man. You know. But even the Lone Ranger had time to. But notice, he's not Aaron no more. Lone Ranger's done with, man. You can't be a Lone Ranger confessing Christian. Oh, but I pray. So do the Muslims. Renegade. Oh. <laughs> Got a rowdy crowd today, man. Oh, but I read my whatever. 
No, man. Do not forsake the assembly of the gathering. For when you come together, you get stirred in love to do the good works. You don't get stirred in doing stuff in your own strength. You get stirred in love. Where you desire to do the good works, man. If you get stirred at doing stuff in your own strength, man, it's only a matter of time before you quit doing it, man. It's only a matter of time. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Where? On the earth as it is in heaven. Man. And he says, I even give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. Whatever you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven, man. So you get some help to make sure it manifests on earth if it's my will. There's no sickness or disease in heaven today. There's no frustration. There's no religion. There's no jealousy or insecurity. There's no addictions. I promise you, you ain't going to ask Abraham who's got the best bud. It's not going on up there, man. You're going to be high on him. You're not going to be going from house to house, man. What proof is that wine you got? I need a drink. No, you ain't going to be jonesing for no drink. You're going to love yourself, man. Because you're in love. You're around love. You, you're in love, man. With him, but physically in an atmosphere of love. Perfect love casts out what? All fear. Not 90% of it. All fear. If you're still afraid of something, you still don't know it's perfect love. Oops. Oops. And we're all in process. So, you know, it's okay to, you know. It's not like, oh, I'm a bad Christian. No, man. Lord, why am I still afraid of heights? Lord, why am I still afraid my kids are going to jack up my grandkids? Lord, why am I still doing this or thinking that way? Lord, why? You know, it's okay. But go to him. Be the clay and quit trying to run everything in your own strength, man. Mm -hmm. Be some soil that's dependent on him to nurture and sow seed into. And he'll sow seed into you through others, man. Through the right people. The people are trying to get out of your life, let them go. Because they can't go where you're going, man. But we want to sit there and hang on to an idea, a thought, a fantasy. You know, that's not life, man. That's not truth. We all want, give me, Lord, the healing anointing. Yeah. I want to heal the sick. I want to raise the dead. Yeah. We do do that. But I'll tell you what real power is. On the earth as it is in heaven. It's the power of a transformed life. Man. It's the power of a Christ-like daughter. It's the love of a Christ-like son. Man. Yeah, yeah. That's real power. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, he liked that one. Man. That's real power. But we're running around. Like rats in the rat race. Gotta get more money to pay these bills. Nope, can't go there. I got a chance to work Wednesday, man, get double time. Jim came in here at 7.05 Wednesday. Worked till 6.30. You know? I mean, 
But what you doing? What you doing? I'm waiting on God. God's waiting on you! To quit trying to be the sculptor and the clay at the same time, man. You can't do both. You can't do both. And for all you master manipulators, you ain't going to win in the long run. You ain't going to win in the long run trying to manipulate people to make decisions and choices that please you. You can't change nobody unless the Holy Spirit is moving with it and in it, man. Real power is a transformed life. But you only get that. Now listen to what I'm going to show you a little scale here. You get real power. Your life gets transformed by yielding to the Holy Spirit and his word. By being with him. Holy Spirit, I don't know you. Maybe that's you today. I don't know you, but I got to know you more, man. That Steve's always happy, man. And even when he screws up, he repents right away, man. That Billy, that Bobby, that B, that Robert, that, you know, man, Paul said it this way. If you can't imitate Christ, do what your leaders are doing, man. Do what your leaders are doing, man. You'll get it there. But we want everything now. I tell you, man. We're all born into Adam, man. We've all been born into a worldly mindset, mentality, and attitude. I promise you, I could take two two-year-olds right now. And everybody, they're so cute. They're so, oh, look at how they are. Let me put one toy between the two of them. <laughs> no, I'm being honest. It's only a matter of time before one of them's cracking the other one in the head with it. Because we're all born into Adam. <clears throat> you didn't have to take a class on how to be jealous. You didn't have to take a course on how to be mad and manipulative all the time. I'm telling you, you'd have to take that course. So when you're yielded to the Holy Spirit and the word, out of that will come intimacy. It'll come intimacy. Because you're not in that place where you're overwhelmed and feeling it at the beginning. Lord, I'm not going to do this anymore because your word says not to do it. Once you got that intimacy with him, then... You keep seeking him. You keep do, being a doer of the word. Then that discipline and structure starts to be established in your life. man. Where you do pray every day. Where you do read your word every day. But you're doing it from the right spirit. And as you're doing that, stuff is getting broken off you. You're becoming more like him, man. Becoming more like him. I remember I had one of my businesses in Dallas, man. I had a bunch of Muslims that worked for me. My God. And we had a bunch of confessing Christians who said they believed in Jesus. Still doing the stuff of the world most of the time. But these Muslims were disciplined. They had some month, they would fast, and they would have the greatest attitude. All they would drink is some water. They'd be early to work. They'd be early to service. Oh, no, no, no. They'd be early to work. They'd be generous. They'd have a smile on their face and a great attitude at all times. Man. And that's people doing stuff in their own strength. How much more should we have it, man? We got to develop this discipline and structure. Because then you can manifest the kingdom on earth. Then you can be trusted by God, man. Yes. Then you can manifest. 
John 14, 12, you'll start to believe. You know, the church got a real belief problem, man. There's probably about 163 different types of Jesus in the Christian church. In this city alone. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. Well, you could do that, but you can't do this. You can go there, but you can't go here. You can do, oh my God. Just be with him. Simplify it, man. Simplify it. Simplify it, man. But when you can be trusted by God consistently, there's the key word. Consistently and constantly, he can anoint you. He can yeah. give you the most precious gift where you're his answer and you're breaking yokes, man. Isaiah 10, 27. That's what we can do. Some of us think so small. My greatest gift is to be a good husband, provider. And, oh my God, you're a moron. My greatest gift is to be the best baseball player to ever walk the planet. Yeah. My greatest gift is to be a good husband, a good wife, a good employee. When you, everything you do, you're supposed to be doing unto the Lord. All that stuff will happen automatically. Amen. Wow. 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 Which just shows you we're still living for ourselves, and we're not created to live for ourselves. Just shows us that, man. We're still living for ourselves, man. Matthew 5, 8. Because God wants to anoint every single one of his children. Yeah. Matthew 5, 8 says this. The pure in heart shall see God. Yeah. You'll see God. You'll see God. Those that love me, I will reveal myself to them. Most people don't see God. Why? Because the pressure comes. Life starts speaking. And situations and circumstances. And <clears throat> we don't have that sound foundation where we know him because we've been with him. Man. I mean, don't raise your hands. How many people pray every day? How many people read their word every day? Come on. Even more than that, you want God to do all this stuff. How many times do you listen to these teachings over and over again every week? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I care if I'm busy. Yeah, okay. But I promise you, if there were passed out hundred dollar bills at Walmart, you'd be there. You'd figure out a way to sneak in line twice and repent afterward, man. You know, because we're not hungry for things of the kingdom, man. And I'm trying to help you see his majesty and glory, man. So you can love people for a living. So you can get established, man, you know. We got to reproduce. We're all reproducing something, man. Yep. You know, seed time and harvest is a spiritual law. It's a spiritual law. The people who don't even know Jesus in the world, they're all givers. Because God always honors his spiritual laws. Seed time and harvest. It's like pulling teeth and get somebody to give in the church half the time. But we'll go eat, we'll go eat out three times this week. No, I'm not trying to tick anybody off. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to tell you, man. True. You know? True. The scripture's real crude. The sons of the enemy are shrewder than the children of light. Yeah. True. They're more ambitious. They're more bold. They have more courage. It should be that way, man. Come on. It shouldn't be that way. Because you have the Holy Ghost, man. But you won't believe you do, man. At all times. Unless you're with him. Yeah. Unless you're with him. When you're with him, all these hidden agendas start coming to the surface. 
you start feeling bad about how you talk to people and treat others. All these ulterior motives of why you do something become obvious and evident, man. Whoa. Whoa. It's a spiritual law. It's not just a physical thing about giving finances, seed time and harvest. Genesis 1.11 says a seed will reproduce after its own kind. We're all reproducing something. And yeah. stuff has been reproduced in us. We have let other things mold us other than Whoa. God. We have let other people's situations, circumstances contaminate our soil, man. Yeah. We have. Mm -hmm. Man, spirit's moving in here this morning. We have let it. We have let it. We have let it. We have let it. It's the difference. You know, Proverbs 4.23 and 23, 7 says to guard your heart above all things, for out of it flow the issues of life. As your heart goes, so does your life, man. Your marriage is bad because your heart's bad. Your children are jacked up because your heart's jacked up, man. Your money is funny because you're not a giver. It's not rock. It's a spiritual law. It's all in here, man. You're angry all the time because you don't go to Jesus, man. You try to control everything, man. It gets people to act in a certain way around you, man. You're a manipulator. You're a warlock. You know, that's reality, man. Yeah. People don't, treat, don't preach this because they want people to feel good. Yeah. The real power... Is the transformation, man, into a Christ-like character, man. That's real power, man. Yeah. Who's got the power? You do. It's sitting in you. It's Colossians 1.27. Christ in you, the hope of glory to a lost and perverted generation, man. Yeah. But the church is so selfish and self-centered and carnal, they don't want to let Christ out. It's only for my family. It's only for my children. It's only for my money. It's only for man. Because you think small. Yeah, yeah. We got to quit thinking small, man. We got to quit thinking small. Love people, man. And understand what his majesty does, man. And see his glory on others, man. Their created value. And be his hands and feet. Pick up where Jesus left off, man. Pick up where he left off, man. Pick up. Pick up. The seed, time and harvest. A seed will always reproduce after its own kind. It always will. Yeah. It always will. Let me give you an example of a seed. Let's do a seed. What would I write down here? Oh, a seed of insecurity. You're four years old and somebody tells you you're ugly. So what's, what does that produce? Low self-esteem. So now as you get older, you need to be seen and heard and noticed. I know this, I know that, look at me. All from a seed when you were four. Because you don't believe you're a new creation. Oh, I have this type of knowledge yet yeah, because you're, you're a hurt little girl. So you're still talking about stuff like that, man. What's the Lord saying now? What's he saying today? Yeah. What's he saying now, man? What's he saying now? That low self-esteem. Now you're in your 20s, late teens. Now you're an addict. Now you're an addict. Or that low self-esteem caused you cause to look for love in the wrong places. 
I'm telling you. All from a seed. All from a seed of low self-esteem. And then the enemy of low self-esteem is planted when they told you how, how ugly you were. <clears throat> and then the, the enemy kept sending other people and situations and circumstances to water it. And tell you, man, you don't have that dollhouse. You don't look like her, the blonde-haired, blue-eyed chick. You don't have... I'm telling you how the enemy works. Seeds will reproduce. Whether good or bad. Whether good or bad. They will reproduce. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Alex were talking about that last night, about words. Words are seeds. Words are seeds. The kingdom of heaven is like a seed. Ain't that what this gospel says? It's like a seed, man. Love reproduces after its own kind, too. Love is patient. That means don't put a timetable on stuff. You better get it right. I'm not telling you God ain't telling you Get people out of your life. That's something different. But you get people out of your life and still love them. Yeah. You really can. Yep. Actually, you have more power and authority to get them free sometimes, man. Yep. Love is kind. Love ain't talking crazy to people. Love never behaves rudely. You want to be an argument, be argumentative? You're behaving rudely. You're not in love. You're in pride. Love thinks no evil. Oh, there we all go, right? Jesus is God, and God is love. He laid down His life, man. Love hopes, trusts, and believes all things. Love can never fail. We keep failing. We keep going around the same mountain like the Israelites did. Because we're not in love. Because we don't believe we are who he said we are. We could do what he said we could do. Yeah. That's what it's about. Our focus is on creating our kingdom and incorporating God in it on Sundays. Come on. Yes. And wonder where is God? It's like I'm right here. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you to make me God more than Sunday morning. Yeah. I'm waiting on you to make me God when you could pray when there's nothing going on in your life. Only when you need something. That's relationship. What if I only talked to my wife when I was hungry? Mm. Mm. Honestly. She looked at me like you goofball. I've been talking to you all day. You haven't even heard me. Because you're so focused on your little kingdom, on your kids, on your grandkids, on your money, on your job, on this, that, and the wiffle ball bat. You can't even hear my voice. You can't even hear my voice. Yeah, yeah. Now you want to eat. Mm -hmm. That's how most people are. That's how come, you know, I laugh at social media, man. People post all this social media saying stuff. Yeah. It's a joke, man. Yeah. Let somebody come spend two hours with you and see your fruit. Yeah. Really? Really? See what type of woman you are, what type of man you are. But you want to tell everybody what's right and what ain't right. A tree is nobody's fruit. Look at your life. Most people on social media should not be saying a thing. 
got to get trained up. When you go into the army of God, he does not put you on the front lines immediately. Neither does the United States, man. You go through some training. Yeah. Oh, but I've been saved 40 years, and you're still a religious nutbag. How do I know? Because I was saved for a long time. I was a religious nutbag. Many moons, man. Many moons, man. Love reproduces, Matthew 16, 24, where you'll deny yourself and really follow him. Problem. You're prideful, you're rebellious, and you're lazy, and it's all about you. Sit. Well, this one ain't about me. It's about my son or daughter. Come on. That's why you, I'm going to say something here. It hurts your feelings. You know why some of your children are keep getting worse and worse and worse? Because they're your God. It's the truth. He's a jealous God. He says in Exodus 34, 14, if you put anyone or anything before me, I call it idolatry. And I am a jealous God, man. I'm a jealous God. I have seen so many situations where people get the right perspective, all of a sudden people get healed. They set boundaries in relationships. All of a sudden the people get right. My life living testimony, man. I'm telling you. But that's my third cousin, Pepe, twice removed. Let Pepe suffer. I promise you'll be okay as long as you're praying for him and believe in God. And I promise you, six months from now, Pepe is going to be Pepe pimp limping, man. I'm telling you. Man. I'm telling you. But we want everything now. Now. We're going into a new year. That's why I'm preaching this today, man. Because I'm telling you, man, we need to take cities. There's so much glory in this place, so much truth, so much revelation, so much opportunity. If people don't want it, then this probably ain't the place for you, man. If you want to feel good, just... There's a church in the next mall. I know the pastor. He's whack. He'll take you right in, man. I promise you, man. Had an argument about what that dude telling me that men were supposed to have the children. And he's got like 150 people in his congregation. I'm telling you. But we need to get serious about our relationship with him, man. This seed keeps reproducing, man. Yeah. Isaiah 119, the seed of love reproduces a willing and obedient heart. The willing and obedient eat the fat of the land. Yeah. Obedience ain't enough. Man, I'm married. I didn't screw her. I didn't sleep with her. Who cares? You wanted to. Your heart condition still jacked. Get it right, man. Be with him. Be with him. Be with him. Be with him until you're like Jesus. It says this in Acts 10, 38. Jesus of Nazareth was anointed. He, was, he wasn't gifted. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And he went around doing good, paying for people's groceries at H-E-B, buying people's meals at work, man, giving people a smile. Hey, you know, Jesus went around doing good. And he healing all that were sick and oppressed of the enemy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All. 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 Let me give you one scripture here. One scripture. James chapter 1, verses 21 through 25. 
Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with humility the implanted word of God. You heard it today. Are you receiving it? Is there going to be an opportunity for you to change? Or are you going to go get drunk and high after service? Are you going to go curse out your husband? Okay, okay. But be doers of the word and not just hearers. Deceiving yourselves. We think we're someplace we're not. Can't even show up at service twice a week. Man, I can't go there. It's too far. You want to go to heaven, it's further. I, I'm just being honest. You know, I, I talk to people for a living. That's what I do. I mess with people all day. You know? I can't because... We, we, we sit there and our hearts get so hard. We justify going against the word of God. And then the seed reproduces. I get my wife to do it then too. Get my kids to do it then too, man. I don't feel like it. Like it's easier for me on Sundays because my team, the Bears, are pitiful, man. So I, I can come here quick. I know it's hard for Weddle to come here on a Sunday, man. Dallas winning, man. I know it's hard for him, man. But he's here. Because he's telling his flesh, no, 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 no. Don't deceive yourselves. Just hear the word alone. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man <clears throat> looking at himself in a mirror. He sees himself, then he goes away and forgets what he looks like. Whoa. But he who looks into the perfect law of freedom and continues in it, continues in it, doesn't give up when the goings gets tough, man. Continues in it. And is not a hearer, but also a doer of the word. This one will be blessed in everything. Yeah. Not most things. In everything he does, man. Everything he does, man. Everything he does, man. I'm telling you, this is what it's about. This is what it's about. Man, I'm trying to get us of the same mind, same heart, same spirit to take this city. We've been here a year already. I ain't having another year like last year going back around the mountain again, man. No, no, no. I ain't doing it. No. I ain't doing it. I don't think I'm that saved. I don't think I got it in me. No. But I'll tell you, we got to start doing something and get our focus off self. Because self is the only weapon the enemy has. Yeah. Self. It's about me. The Bible says to deny yourself. The Bible says it's no longer you who live. The Bible says your life is not your own. You've been bought at a price. Yeah. So you have no rights. You've given them up when you confess Jesus. Yeah. But we forget about that. We push our agenda. We push our knowledge. We push our hidden motives of the heart on others man we we try to get people with, to reproduce to be a part of the seed the enemy start talking to eve he reproduced the seed in eve what did she do immediately reproduced it in adam reproduce it's always reproducing man but check this out man he says hey because you heeded the voice of your wife and not mine. Because 
you heed someone else's voice and not the Lord's or the words. Because It's going to be trouble. She's going to have pain in childbirth, man. And you're going to have to work the land and fight to be with me, man. Fight to live through me. But it's all good because I got a plan. I got a plan for her seed shall crush the head of his seed. Devil's got seed. Yes. So does, so do we. But let me tell you something. What's amazing about that scripture? Women have no seed. They got the egg. He was prophesying that Mary was going to bring the seed in to the earth without a male. Prophesied, it's all good. Yes, you're gonna have you're gonna have pain, you have to work, you're gonna have to fight, you're gonna have to do all this stuff, but it's all good because I got you. Because this seed is gonna crush his head, man. And I'll tell you, because you believe in him, you have the authority to crush his head, man. Because you are his, you have the power to shift and change and turn it around, man. I'm telling you, man. You have that power and authority, man. The enemy's been lying to you, man. He's been keeping you from your high call. He's been trying to thwart your destiny, man. He's trying to get you to reproduce and live for yourself, man. Ooh, I'm telling you. See yourself as he sees you. See yourself as he sees you. Know who you are. Believe what he said about you. You're more than a conqueror. You could do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are his hands and feet. You are his mouthpiece. If you believe, you will do greater works than him, man. Believe that as Jesus is, so are you today in this world, man. Believe that God is for you, man. See his majesty, man. See his majesty. I want everyone online. Man, I'm pumped up here, man. <laughs> I want everyone online to take its opportunity. And that's the Lord who said it, man. Not leave it, that's good. I'm telling you guys, let's get it right, man. Let's get it right. Everybody take an opportunity to ask the Lord what he wants. What he wants. What he wants you to give him. We're good soil. We're good soil. Father, I thank you, Lord, for everyone sowing an offering into you today, Lord. Oh, by Cash App, online, or sold in this week, Lord. I ask that you would bless each and every offering, Lord. Oh, I ask that a spirit of increase would just flow upon it, and they would immediately be aware that it's you who brought that increase, Lord. That you would be glorified that your name would be high and lifted up, Lord, that they would know that you are Jehovah Jireh. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. We love you guys. You be blessed. Bye.